Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ivan and I'm a senior solutions engineer at Gimples. And in this talk, there's going, to, there's going to be a lot of buzzwords that we all like together in one place, AI, IoT, LLMs, foundational models. We have it all and I think it's very exciting to look at how we can combine this all together to drive more productivity growth. And that's another intro slide. So I'll start with a question. There's going to be quite a few questions throughout my presentation. First question is, what is IoT? And I think people who have been in the industry for 20 years still have different answers to this question because we just cannot figure out. There's so many things at the same time, and everyone has their own answer. Is it, is it a fridge that has a door that can tell you you're out of beer, but it has a back door that will send your data out? Like, I don't know. I think from the engineering standpoint, I formulated for myself at least, that is the sensing, intelligence, and connectivity. And then you can apply to different things. And then we have sort of figured out the sensing part a long time ago. We have different ways to capture the, 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 the sensors and all sorts of things from around us. We have figured out connectivity. Honestly, there's a huge market and competition technologies, low power technologies like LoRa, 4G, and things like that. So this is kind of figure out, pick and place. But the intelligence part is something that has been progressing with the type of capacity that we have available in IoT devices. And I'm going to talk about it from the hardware standpoint later, but I think the focus for us is now adding more value into the intelligence part. And the question is, what is the most important graph in tech business? And it's not this one. Not this one. It's this one. It's the Gartner hype cycle. And then you can find this hype cycle for a lot of different um, you know, industries, a lot of different topics. This particular case is the hype cycle for artificial, artificial intelligence. So for those of you who don't know, this hype cycle kind of tells you at which stage of adoption and closeness to productivity different technologies are and how soon they're expected to reach this further desirable plateau of productivity. That, where the computer vision is right now, it means that we now can take this and apply it and get value immediately, and it's understandable, and people understand how to use it and why they want to use it. But there's an interesting edge AI part, which I would argue actually goes in hand, hand in hand with computer vision, um, and that's what we're going to focus on today. And you can also notice that, that while it's kind of in an early stage, it's, it's going to reach the plateau in less than two years. This technology is really rapidly evolving, and we see a lot of innovation happening. So, Another question, I have a lot of questions in this presentation. What does the real world look like? Right? If we look around, we have light, sound, smell, all sorts of signals, the sensing part that we have already figured out. And what we do as humans, if we look around, like I can smell something and I can tell if it's a burger or a pasta, or I can look at the light and say if it's red or green. So our brain is taking a signal that a sensor usually takes, and makes an inference based on it, and determines what it is, does a classification or a regression or something like that. Now, historically, we've been trying to reproduce this on all sorts of devices, including IoT, and that's what we call heuristical intelligence, heuristical programming. We were seeing the data come in, we were knowing what problem we want to solve, and we were building rules around it, and then we're expecting the system to kind of tell us what's going on based on those rules. But the new approach, this AI, AI at the edge, is when you don't want to set the rules manually, but rather you would give to the program an algorithm all the data that you have, all the classes or problems that you want to solve, and you let the algorithm figure it out on its own. This is way more efficient, but first, just to keep in mind these two things. Data is paramount in both cases, and IoT is all about data. We get a lot of data, we get it from all kinds of sources, but what do we do with it, right? So why is this heuristical approach lacking? And why are we starting to see more and more limitations now of people who are working with this approach? Is that the real world is fuzzy, right? Like, we can say, OK, I can figure out these two edge cases that I've seen on my production line, and I will set the rules for them. But what if something that I didn't know about happens? How do I know and detect this, this thing that I will have to fail again and now learn about it? Like, we cannot account for everything. Heuristics are labor intensive. Again, to collect and model all the situations that we want to um, anticipate, it requires a lot of domain knowledge and you know, just time to do this. And then the insights are being left on the table, right? Again, IoT data. We say we want to detect when a temperature crosses the threshold. 
but in the same data that I'm collecting, potentially there are so many more different problems that I can extract and solve with exactly the same inputs, but we don't know how to, how to approach it because it's a bit more complex than a threshold, right? So this QR code, was, you'll see a couple of times, I challenge that everyone has to scan at least one in the presentation and sign up. Uh, this is a QR code that will let you register an Edge Impulse, which is a platform that we provide that lets you build a machine learning algorithm, a machine learning pipeline, and deploy it on an edge device. It's a, it will be an algorithm that will take sensor data in, any sensor data that you like, any so, sort of problem that you would like to solve. You will build it using cloud. Of course, training models requ requires a lot of compute. But then you'll be able to deploy it to uh, any sort of hardware after that. From high level, that's what it looks like. And that's, that's, that's a normal engineering process, right? It's an iterative process. So the platform allows you to do this machine learning engineering with embedded systems in mind, iteratively and quickly, without having to, um, without having to pay attention to like, things that, very, uh, that are very hard to do. Second question we always get is like, where can I deploy machine learning with this platform? So I made this graph to tell that you can deploy on PC, on MCU, NPU, MPU, whatever you like. But our CTO likes to say it's basically anything under the sun. If you can compile C++ code, this can run there. And that's another kind of overview of what sort of hardware I'm talking about. Any hardware, of course, like for smaller hardware, you'll consider different problems. You will not run a computer vision model on a microcontroller unit. But all sorts of sensor data can have machine learning applied to them and value extracted from them. Right, so I think what I'm trying to say with this is that AGI and IoT are having sort of a love story because it's a perfect match. Um, there are a lot of reasons, and um, I've been having quite a few conversations today where I'm saying the most important thing, I think, is that you're saving on energy costs and on bandwidth. These are the two most expensive things in IoT, in my opinion. We have to pay for ingestion uh, to the cloud. If you stream raw data to the cloud from your huge deployment of sensors, that's a huge cost. Energy costs of devices that are either battery powered, that you have to replace battery every couple of years, it's also very expensive. So with running the models directly on the edge, instead of running a camera that will stream all the frames to the cloud and run a big model there, which, which means you have to send 30 720p images at uh, per second to the cloud, right? It's an enormous amount of data. But I think that the same point as that is I, uh, the edge AI allows you to extend the possibilities of what you thought is possible with IoT. So before, this kind of camera that has an NVIDIA GPU inside, you can only imagine it having connected directly over Ethernet to your local network. What you can do now is connect it via LoRa backhaul, for example. And LoRa doesn't allow you to stream images. LoRa allows you to send one short 124-byte message up. So you do all the processing on the camera, and you send one message, yes or no, over LoRa. So you can now use camera systems in your IoT, low-power IoT systems. Right, but let's take a little step back and actually bring back the point that is shared between all the approaches and engineering that we're trying to do with sensors. Everything starts with data. We don't have a use case or, or anything to do without data. Gen AI, right? This is a big thing in the last, in the last several years. And I think it's, it's crazy that I can now write a prompt like this and get this. Looks exactly the same, right? It's absolutely similar. Get this slightly cartoonish image out, uh, but still it's like representing the message. But there are other models that with the same prompt can generate a photorealistic image that now is resembling the reality. So we can use Gen AI capabilities to augment the data sets that we have, because collecting data and finding the ways how to collect the data is often a very hard task. Um, so what we have added to the platform, and in, I'm going to show now time series data, but with images we have the same, is the ability to use these big models not to do your job, not to solve your problem, but to help you build a robust solution. For example, this model from Eleven Labs is able to generate keywords. So let's see how it works in the platform. I'm putting the phrase that I want to have, and it will generate me several samples. 
TechX London 2025. TechX London 2025. TechX London 2025. So now I can generate a, a keyword spotting data set without having to touch microphone. That's pretty amazing. These models are already very good. Another one, imagine I want to build a model that detects glass breaking. I can generate these sounds without having to break glass. I don't want to break anything. I want to build a model that will detect it for me. So that's, that's pretty great, right? Like, it's incredible that we can do these things without having to, to, you know, it's very fast and very large amounts of data that we can generate with um, the lowest uh, investment, right? But actually, everything starts with label data. Because if we have a bunch of data that we collected from the field, but it's not labeled, it's not quality data, it's going to do us damage rather than help us build a solution. So quality control, as we say, garbage in, garbage out, right? So again, LLMs, right? It's crazy that now I can put an image to, in this case, a chat GPT or any other LLM uh, model, ask it what's going on. It's not going to tell me there's a person wearing orange. It's going to tell me, which was taken actually at the Olympics, that this is a Dutch national rowing team that's getting a medal, which is already a step further to any sort of like automated process I could do. Right? That's great, but it's, it's not applicable directly for IoT use cases because it's very expensive, right? These models are huge. They're not going to fit anywhere. They're very expensive to even compute. And going back to the point, you have to send all those images up. So the costs are growing exponentially. So that's not really feasible. Now, what we can do again is to use these models to help us quality control the data we already have, right? Like if I'm, if I'm building um, a use case with a lot of um, images, I'm going to go and collect a video that will have the things of interest for me. But then I would have to label every frame of the video manually, which is a very labor-intensive task. Now, what I can do is to give all my data set to this uh, large language model, and this is how it looks on our platform, and ask it, look at every image you have uh, out of all those three, 4,000, and tell me if there is a hard hat or no. And in five minutes, I'm going to have 5,000 labels applied. That's pretty incredible. It's in in increasing the productivity with which we can now approach these solutions. So what we have so far is that we have these foundation models, big models, LLMs, that are incredibly smart, and they're very general. Um, and they can assist us to, to build solutions for the edge, which don't have to be that smart, because I'm building this model to, build, to solve one particular problem at, one, at my plant or in my product. I don't need it to know everything in the world. But sometimes it's just not enough, right? So like, how, do we, how else can we be smart and combine um, them together? We need to take a step back again and actually realize that everything starts with hardware. IoT is hardware, right, in the end. So what the slide that I had before with um, the, the IoT is connectivity and um, hardware and everything, before we were trying to develop the technologies on top like connectivity, but the hardware was limited. We could only run the control logic there and sensing and sending everything up. But now hardware has caught up. We have so many possibilities to put extra intelligence in the same chips that we have and extract value from the sensors that we're sampling. So what, how we like to say is that Edge AI hardware, three plus one layers. Three plus one because these three are actually IoT still. And GPU, you could say somewhere in between. It can be an embedded GPU, but three plus one. MCUs and MCUs with NPUs, which is neural processing units, which is dedicated ASICs designed for machine learning inference. MPUs, which is typically Linux systems. And then GPUs and AI accelerators, which are high-end Edge ML hardware. So let's take a look. What happened in 2022? A company, a little company called Arm, have developed something that is called Ethos. Arm are known for licensing general purpose computing cores, but they said, hey, how do we make a GPU for embedded systems? In quotes, right? So they made this very, very energy efficient and high performant piece of hardware that is able to process machine learning operations very quickly. And because ARM did it, now everyone who works with ARM can just take it and apply it to their designs. Incredible. Now we have a lot of companies like Aleph and Infineon who have solutions with socks that have a dedicated NPU on their hardware licensed from ARM. But then companies like ST started looking and said, hey, I want to do it myself. And I can do it better than licensing a thing from ARM. So you see that yellow 
uh, corner. ST has announced like a couple months ago. So they developed this STM 32N6. You can uh, see this kit in our booth 152. We have uh, this, you can you can look at it. But basically now they developed their own silicon accelerator for 600 gigaops, which means that MCU grade device, MCU grade power consumption, you can run um, YOLO V8 at 15 FPS. It's incredible. Second, mid-end computer vision. You have things like NXP, who used ARM, also uh, dedicated acceleration, and Renesas, who built their own IP. Amazing. This, you can already connect several cameras and have a Linux system and way more complex. And then you have high-end computer vision systems. This is where you can run 10 models at the same time, 10 camera streams at 60 FPS, and put it in robotics applications, things like that. This, is, this hardware now, you can just grab everything and make things run locally that you could never imagine before. So we can be a little bit even more smart and say, hey, how about um, I run a very simple model. It's called an anomaly detection that says, is there something I don't know in the frame, yes or no? Is there something that's not supposed to be on the floor? This model will tell you yes or no, but as soon as it happens, I can only then send this image to GPT or with the last level of devices to an on-device LLM or VLM and get an insight of what's actually happening. So this kind of solution I see in, in, in the coming year be becoming way more prominent and, and interesting because the hardware allows to do these things, which is, I think, my, my, my personal highlight of the coming year. And this is a small demo of it in action. There's an anomaly detection model running, and you see the cascade is not enabled, so we're not sending anything up. We're not sending anything to ChatGPT. But now, I'm sending only these frames. If I were to do it for every frame, I would spend all that money that I was talking about. Now it's out. Oh, there's no anomalies. I'm not sending anything. It's running just on the device. And now a signature prop of Edge Impulse, a bottle of beer. Beer bottles, yeah. So I can balance kind of, if I know that this one is not going to happen very often, I can still offload it and, and you know, use the, the bigger computational expensive things. Right, so just to reiterate, I think all these points, now is the time when the hardware and software are at the point where we can, in the same solutions, distributed low power IoT devices, get way more intelligence from the data we're already collecting and having. Last question. I had a lot. What is the most important thing for emerging technologies? I think it's always, I like, I like showing this. This is, this is a great thing because we are all developers in, in one way or the other. We all know developers who we as managers will come to and say, I want this, but you need a developer who will take it, implement it, test it, and do everything you want for it. So that's why we at Edge Impulse, the platform that you've seen before, we have um, made it so that uh, you can access it for free, you can use it for free, you can access most of the features for free, you can even use the outputs of the platform, such as models and use cases, in commercial applications for free, because if this technology is getting adapted by everyone and everyone is speaking the same language and knows how to, which hardware to use, which use cases to build, this makes us all way more productive and coming up with incredible new, new things that, that can help us. So another QR code. Those who missed the last two, this is your last chance. No, actually, not the last one. But yeah, sign up, uh, immediate platform access. You can you know, do all this, talk to us, talk to us at our booth, and one thing on the left is also an actual book that we have a few left in the, on the booth, I think. It's a book about AGI. It's about a lot of concepts that are not in the scope of this conversation, but it gives you the fundamental understanding of how sensor applications are approached when you want to apply machine learning to them. This is a very interesting table read. This is not marketing about oh, how to use Edge Impulse. It's really fundamental principles of these technologies. And also a lot of... Um, content that we've created about these interesting things. So that's all for me. Thank you very much.